it's not even budging look at this what's going on everybody welcome to internal tech and here we're going to 3d print we're going to build stuff and we're pretty much going to dive into everything technology related everything tech okay i've been putting this thing off mainly because i wanted to make a video about it but then i came to a conclusion okay i needed to go ahead and make this thing MacBook 14 inch stand. This is exactly the one I was gonna get. Vertical laptop stand for MacBook. Compatible with MacBook Pro stand, blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen, I was about to buy this. This looks great. It looks cool, right? It even has a little rubber on the inside, you know, aluminum, nice. Aluminium for those who love to say aluminum. $34.99. It's not the most expensive one out there, mind you, but $34.99. For something as simple as this, it sounds worth it if you want it made out of metal and you want it to have the nice like rubber inner coating and uh, what 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 does this even say? Protective bumpers, aluminium construction, scratch resistant finish, anti-slip silicone feet. I made one and it does not cost $35, y'all. But before we get into how I made this and me like building it, 3D printing it, all that stuff, you may have noticed I have something uh, interesting sitting right here. Go ahead through my channel. Go look through the, the YouTube shorts. I want you to see uh, what I made here. It was, it was a quick. I'm lying. It was not quick. This was this took a couple of days to 3D print. One of the pieces alone took 34 hours to print. Thirty four ninety nine for the channel. We got ourselves some glue going on here. But yeah, if you haven't seen this yet, go through my shorts. Check it out. There's a quick little fun video about this being spray painted and showing it off a little bit. There's also a short about a little shoe that I prototyped and go check out the other video about the hair pick. Say bye to Iron Man, y'all. Okay, so instead of paying $35 for this, I thought this would be something very, very simple to 3D print, especially since the size isn't terribly big you know it doesn't take up a lot of space the other thought i had was that if the piece itself was too large i could always chop it in half and just separate the pieces that way you would get more coverage you would get more um surface area so to speak or more uh what am i trying to say you would have more structure pretty much so two pieces could offer just as much structure or maybe even more with the feet instead of just having one whole piece so pretty much i was already thinking of a couple of different ways that I can make this. And I finally decided to go in and just open Blender and just kind of freeform a design out. So here's our design and here's what the whole thing looks like. We're actually gonna change this to something iridescent. So pretty much I started out with a simple shape and then I started to cut pieces out of that shape. This is the resulting finish. As you can see, we have the two holes for the aluminum tubing. So pretty much we have a slot here that fits the MacBook and the rest of it is just freeform designing really. Something to look kind of edgy, futuristic, you know, something cool looking. So in the final design, both pieces are actually the same exact piece, but they're pretty much just mirrored. We have the two holes here for the aluminum tubing and everything else is pretty much just freeform designing. That's the face that hits the ground. And this smaller slot that you're seeing towards the bottom, this here was my attempt to give the fans on the bottom of the MacBook some some room to blow the air out of. However, you might notice the bottom is completely flat, so this technically doesn't work, but um, I figure this is something I can expound upon in a second revision. For now, this works pretty well. We pretty much took this piece and we mirrored it, and this is pretty much the final product. Sometimes I do coloring in here to see what color I want to print it in, what, what color scheme I want to give it. I decided not to paint the tubing because that would mess with the offset a little bit. And I, it, it gets kind of scratched up once you spray paint it. So I just left them bare metal. This design would not have been possible if I didn't model my MacBook in advance. I basically just took my MacBook and then I took my dial caliper. And I measured this way. Um, with my ruler, I measured the other way and I measured the length. And I pretty much modeled that into here. This here really changed the game. This changed the game. First, I modeled the MacBook. And second, I modeled a block or, you know, like a simple square, something that could go around this. I laid this into the piece 
and I cut out this hole from the MacBook itself. This is something that they call box cutting, or they also call it a Boolean subtraction is what it's really doing. And it's pretty much taking one shape and it's taking another shape. And when you do a Boolean subtraction, it's subtracting the features of one shape and where they intersect from the other shape. This is a very quick and simple way so that you don't have to model the same geometry twice, pretty much. I'm in love with Boolean subtraction. Okay, now you've seen some of the design, you've seen some of the assembly. Over here is the final product. Check that out. It works very, very well in my opinion. And it's actually more sturdy than I expected it to be. I was worried about the whole sizes fitting, but they fit perfectly. It's about 13 millimeters. Yeah, it's about like, it's about 12.9 something, 13 millimeters. I assume 13. And then I added another 0.2 millimeters on top of that, which gives 0.1 millimeters on each side. It's not the most snug, but it's like 90% snug. It, it, I'm very comfortable with how the fit is with this one. And also I'll show you really quick. Since the piece is printed this way, like if this, if this is the floor if, or the bed, it printed this way pretty much. This face came out completely flat. So I didn't have to worry about any warping or wobbling going on. Check this out. 
thing is sturdy, y'all. This sits right in the middle so that it misses both of these feet. It goes on just like that. I don't hear any rattling. Can y'all hear any rattling? Super sleek, super rugged. As you can see, I didn't paint the metal, as I mentioned earlier. I sped up the feed rate to about 140 or 150%. And then I sped up the flow rate to 107, just so that it wasn't spacing out any layers or anything like that. So overall, this print took about somewhere between 10 and 11 hours to print, which isn't bad in the world of 3D printing. I had no need to glue these in because, you know, it's rigid enough. Like this isn't something that's going to be moving a lot. So I don't have a need for it to be like glued together or hard fastened or anything like that. This works very well, y'all. I'm very impressed with the tolerance with the slot to fit the MacBook in. After I measured this distance, I only added a little bit of offset. The, the fit is pretty perfect with this model. I intended for all the ports to be towards the bottom. If I were to put this the other way, when I go to hook up my cables, my adapters, um, even the charger and things like that, it's kind of elevated off the ground and kind of tugging on the cords. And I didn't really want anything like that going on. And the Apple logo is upside down, which personally I didn't really care about. For me, it was mainly the access to the cords. I just wanted the cords to be lower to the ground and as out of the way as possible and non snaggable as possible. I didn't want anything to get snagged or tugged on, right? This is also something that was 3D printed. Very, very similar to this build actually. But yeah, this is 3D printed. This lives right here. I have my Xbox controller also on a 3D printed stand. And then now we have our MacBook stand. I love this thing. Anytime I set my MacBook down, whether or not it's hooked up to something, it's going in here. Let me hook a few things up and see how it works actually. I'm, I'm curious now. Okay, so the charger is gonna be on this side, which means I could just snake this around. This, this being right here frees up a lot more space this way on my desk. Before I would pretty much have this here and you know, I'd be typing blah, 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 blah. And then when I want to use my PC, or if this was hooked up to my monitors, I would pretty much have this sitting somewhere like right here, which was bad for two reasons. One reason is that it takes up space mainly. There's other things that I could put here, right? And the second reason is that I would be tempted to put things, uh, I would be tempted to put things on top of my MacBook. And look y'all, I'm doing, I'm doing a tip over test and it's not tipping over. It's not even budging. Look at this. Literally when I push the top, it's just scooting over. That's exactly what we needed. Okay, so the results y'all, out of 10, I would give this build a 10.5. This was an easy 10.5 y'all. It was quick to design, it was quick to print, very quick to build, and it holds up. If you wanna make something like this, let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you think about it and tell me what you'd wanna see out of it. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this build. And if this is something you wanna make yourself, I can definitely prepare open source files and an open source page just for y'all to make this yourself. All right, y'all, this has been another really cool build with internal tech. Make sure to like, subscribe, tell me what you wanna see, tell me what you like in the comments below. I will be responding to y'all. I will see you the next build. Peace.